Welcome to Music Matters Podcast with Daryl Craig Harris, talking about all things music with celebrities, artists, music business insiders and more. Hi, Mai, how are you doing? Hi, good. What about you? I'm very good. So you're in Tokyo, right? Yeah, I'm in Tokyo. It's been a year since we've last played in Texas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did uh, South by Southwest. What, what year was that? It yeah. seems like it was, it was what, five, six 2000, years ago? Yeah, 2015, I think. 15 yeah. or 14. Yeah, that was fun. Long we did, uh, we did uh, Japan night, <laughs> which was great. Yeah, yeah, we did uh, it. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, so how, how, have, um, how have you been? I know Tokyo has been, obviously, you're dealing with the COVID stuff and all that kind of thing, but um, has that affected yeah. you song, songwriting-wise or...? How is that? How does that work for you? I, I'd say like half and a half. Like my performance is gone, gave everywhere else. But at the same time, like writing wise, I do miss writing with people. But with the the technology, mm. I get to do like Zoom sessions, Skype sessions, like receiving track and doing top lines. So right. yeah, I'd say half half, but uh, definitely. I definitely get bored sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard being isolated. I think you know, as a songwriter, you kind of need <laughs> stimulation. You need to be out getting motivation for stuff, right? And it's kind of being locked in the place is yeah. kind of challenging. Yeah, like especially with somebody, like working with somebody. If I get stuck, like the other person might give me a better idea, or like we could just go out and have like a hamburger. Yeah, just come back to the studio, right? yeah. and like yeah, that's. That was a little bit, yeah. That was something that I missed this year. So or originally, like year. Um, originally, I know we met, yeah, some like some years ago. Now it's been almost, I guess, eleven years ago, maybe, maybe longer. And um, yeah, you, you had just acted at that point. You had just come back from Los Angeles because you were going to school there. Which which music school did you go to? L.A. College of Music. It used to be L.A. Music college so la college of music i think oh, okay and that was uh and that was studying with guys that were actually in the music business really doing it wasn't just just college professors right actually a, a lot of the the faculty there are like working musicians uh the vocal department had tierney sutton she was like she was getting nominated jazz grammy almost every year and oh, i yeah it was i actually a lot of the yeah, were working like i turn on the tv and the guitar department teacher is on the grammy performing with Tim, justin timberlake the next morning i bump into him at the starbucks <laughs> so it was a cool environment yeah that's kind of la in general yeah. in hollywood like that that's kind of the fun part of it you're you're you feel like, I mean, I went to Musicians Institute and I felt like I was actually in it, like I was with guys that were actually doing it. And for, for a student, that's the best way. You're getting the real world experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, originally, you were studying to be um, an attorney. Is that correct? Yes, I, I went to law school for one year and I quit. Um, <laughs> that was... I think it was a good decision to make because I don't really see myself anymore as an attorney. Mm. I even suck at my tax report and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I could have killed somebody or like somebody innocent in jail. So please. Yeah, you avoided all that. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. good. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, how many years were you in uh, Los Angeles? About around four years, so two years in school, and then we take in some classes about one year, and then like like performing and also retaking partial classes, and then yeah. What, what um? You, of course, you went there Japan. because I think it was right after. Oh, so I, I went back to Japan actually right after the earthquake. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was like one of the most difficult time to go back, but like somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was worked. Weird. Though. Yeah, we were actually when that Japan. Yeah, you were there in Japan. Well, yeah. we were actually, yeah. Strangely enough, we were on vacation in Hong Kong when that actually happened. But when we came back, yeah, it was a really weird time, and it, uh -huh. it took about a month for us to come back. Yeah. 
Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, we met at the Pink Cow with our friend Tracy, who has her club mm-hmm. in Tokyo. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a great, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a great place. Um, when, what got you originally interested in songwriting? Did you start really young with that, or how did how did that happen? Actually, I didn't write anything up until I was like over twenty. I won some huh? like singing competition, and I uh, so when I was twenty, I won Yamaha. Yamaha singing competition and one of the ARs there told me like over 20 I won't be able to survive without writing a song so oh yeah and at that time I was 20 so I started writing then I started like writing songs from like folk horse very sparse easy and that's where I started Hmm. What's that in the songwriting? I mean, you've been super successful and, and we're going to talk about some of the groups that you've been working with in, in recent uh, mm-hmm. years, but um, mm-hmm. songwriting, is that, is that really a collaborative thing for you or is it something you mainly do on your own? How does that work? I have like two different things going on. So I have my, I still have my artist stuff. Like that's only for me. And. Cause you have a career as an artist also. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, mostly me only me writing i'm down to collaborating but all the time like me sitting in the bathroom or like me getting bored at home or like you know getting depressed and i go to the piano start writing a song that's how things happen so a lot of it coming comes from me so Hmm. but writing for j-pop and k-pop i really need a collaborator only because I don't really have, I don't have nothing to start from in a way. <laughs> yeah, because you kind of, but that stuff is very rhythmic. It's a lot of it's dance music. So you kind of need, maybe you kind of need like the groove and kind of the vibe right yeah. before you get started. It's yeah, not like really yeah. writing ballad stuff so much. Yeah, so like, unless they need a ballad, piano ballad, that singer songwriter, I really need a clever that gives me the beat and the, the maybe the scenery or the picture of the girls or boys singing yeah. and dancing what's um what's some of the groups i i, I know twice is one of the groups that's been very successful what's, mm-hmm. what's some of the other groups that you've yeah. been working with uh twice oh my girl uh oh so txt got seven and like a lot of others who did i who else did i do uh for j-pop i did misha kananishino gospelers mm-hmm. Hey, say jump. Yeah, there's so many. It, it, it's fun because like that music, I mean, I was exposed to that, of course. I lived in Tokyo for four years. That's how we met. But uh-huh. um, that music is just fun, right? It's like fun dance, like, and it's been yeah, now it's, made, it's, it's make, making itself around the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's more theatrical in a way, I think, hmm. compared to American pop. Is there a difference between writing uh, for J-pop and K-pop, is there a different thing or is it the same or how, how do you approach it? It used to be a lot different, but now, no way, it's getting a little bit more similar. Hmm. But, um... Because you have a lot of the same, to... same folks working on both both genres, right? Yeah, same folks, but at the same time, like top lining wise and melody wise, it could be due to the language, but I see a lot of difference between k-pop and like maybe like mainstream j-pop yeah and when you write um so uh, i mean I, I i don't know i'm just asking because i i would assume k-pop is in korean right yeah yeah, yeah. it's in korean so i i usually write it in english and then okay, that's what i was gonna ask you yeah. yeah local lyricist and yeah, then they because you can't it can't really, it's really not like a direct translation they have to kind of rework some of the phrases and some of the i would assume right yeah, it's not even like reworking. They they change the title of the song. They it's amazing. Like they keep the melody, hmm. but then the concept and the title, like everything is changed sometimes. And sometimes like they keep the original title, they keep the, the catchy words and stuff, but sometimes hmm. it's totally different. It's and sometimes it's the chorus is the chorus can actually be in English, right? I, I know they, that was a J pop thing. You would hear the the Eng- or the uh, Japanese language that all of a sudden the chorus would kind of be like, oh, it's English. <laughs> it's funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. English keywords is 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 very important. That's the catchy part, I think. Yeah, it gets everybody going. And we worked with uh, yeah. I think AKB48 was one of the groups we did with, when I was with Cirque. They came and did a show, and it was it's funny because some of those groups have a lot of members, right? <laughs> it's like it's not just I a mean, five like, piece. Yeah. Thing. 
not some of the all all the the latter groups they have like 48 members like akb 48 and sku 48 it's all 48 i know it's crazy yeah so it's like imagine imagine going on yeah, I know. Imagine going on the road with, <laughs> with that many people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but yeah, but they're on the road. And sometimes like they do all the, the whole reunion thing or union thing, like all the three letter group getting together. They even have like Jakarta 48, like Hong Kong 48 ah, or something. Yeah, because like, I would imagine too, that's pushing into China and, and all those countries. I mean, that's I know that genre has become... I was talking to a friend of mine um, in Finland, and actually her daughter is a huge, huge fan of Twice. And I, I said, "Oh, you know what? That's uh-huh. funny because I have a friend. That, yeah, I have a friend that writes with them." Um, and part of what you've been doing too is you've been traveling. I mean, before COVID, but you've been traveling, doing songwriting conferences and and that kind of thing in different countries. Can you tell me a little bit about mm-hmm. that? Yeah. So talking about Finland, Finland is actually how I started writing. So as uh-huh. you remember, I was yeah, I was a singer songwriter on the piano singing the, like sad emotional song yeah. and then you introduced me to the the, the sony staff over here and then right. they asked me if i'm interested in writing for other people and i said why, why not so they booked me in the writing camp in finland mm-hmm. and that yeah that's where that, that's how i started and over there i met like amazing talent producers and started writing yeah, Finland actually is, you know, a lot of people know Finland for the heavy metal bands, but actually Finland, Sweden, and even Norway have a really huge mm-hmm. pop scene. Uh, Max Martin, who's written with, with or produced oh, many, yeah. Yeah. many household names, Christina Aguilera, all these different people, mm-hmm. Brittany. Um, he, you know, he's from Sweden. My friend Maki Komanen um, is a big pop guy in, in Finland. And it's interesting because I, every country has its, they have, you know, pop is sort of pop, but every country has its own flavor, right? Is that something yeah, that, that's yeah. fun for you to play with or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is definitely fun. Like, I think sometimes, uh, yeah, like Italian pop sounds very Italian. J pop sounds very J. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a, there is definitely a difference. And is, it, is there common themes in J pop that, that, that people tend to like? Different. It's usually about, it's, for girl group, a lot about love song. Right, yeah. <laughs> like bubbly. Yeah. Love song. But uh, uh, K-pop, for K-pop, it used to be a little bit more bubbly, but now they talk a little bit more in like different stuffs too. Mm-hmm. So the groups are getting more sore, so it's not just bubbly. Um, J-pop, Something seasonal happened too, like you know that mm. the cherry blossom. So the, the around the uh, spring, they love the song that right. has a cherry blossom keyword in it. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I mean, like it's in a way, it's a formula, but but also too, there's a lot of really creative stuff going on with with J-pop, K-pop. That's actually affecting even like the Western songwriters, right, and the, how they approach writing music. Uh huh. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it could because that it seems like that 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 um that genre has become so popular around the world. Do you hear do you hear from fans kind of everywhere? Or how or how does that how does that work for you? Or are you kind of behind the scenes? How does that kind of happen? Well, that's also one of the, the difference between K-pop and J-pop. So I do get more fan reaction from K-pop fans ah, okay. for the songs that I've written. Ah, yeah cool. but yeah and cool. also like me in LA in like 2019 like doing shopping in Alhambra listening to the song I've written <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah that's actually um so when we did the thing um with for Sony we played it actually also that was part of our thing we did in um Austin for, for South by Southwest um mm-hmm. you're actually one of your songs or two of your songs were on the Sony play uh or Sony device right the music device that would they came as yeah Walkman yeah, the Sony Walkman, mm-hmm. um, the new digital one. Um, so how did that happen? Did that, how did they originally hear f- about you f- to, to do that to, on, the, on the devices? So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting story. I, I think I, I don't know how I was on Taxi. Do you know the Taxi? Yeah, the music distribution. Yeah. Service. yeah, like somehow I had like a free Taxi subscription for a limited time. Oh, okay. So I was 
browsing through a taxi and they were looking for like so something that's in like mp3 player looking for a song for preload right and i just sent the song without knowing it's a sony i somehow right. i thought like it's some like some smaller target yeah, stuff. yeah you don't think it's going to be like a huge <laughs> target, but, you know right. yeah something like kids friendly stuff but then then like sony contacted me and was like was it sony yeah yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, I mean, and also too, that's kind of was, was a big introduction for you, right? To, to people um, as a songwriter yeah. and as an artist. So. Yeah, it was. And the timing was pretty good too. So the, the Sony staff in the States, they didn't even know that I'm a Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you're singing. I mean, well, your English is good, but your singing too is like perfect. Well, thank you. Perfect. You don't, you don't hear any kind of an accent. Um, yeah. Which is, it's kind of great and to I, be able to walk in both worlds, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. yeah, I sent it, especially I sent it from LA. So they thought I, you know, I lived, I mean, I was living there, but they didn't even know that I'm a Japanese. And when the release happened, I went back to Japan. So I go to like electricity store, like Yamada Denki or like all yeah. these, big you stores, know, big yeah. camera. Yeah. And then like, yeah, and the Walkman, I walk into the Walkman space and my song is on. And it's sometimes like they had like the poster of me yeah. as a promotional, yeah, kid. So it was, it was really good. I felt, I felt so good coming back to see something that I've done in the States. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the thing is that that's so competitive. I mean, even just no matter where you are at being a songwriter, being a published songwriter, oh, yeah. um, just getting your name out there. Right. So that's such a great calling card with such a, a big yeah. company. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a funny story uh, because way back when I was playing with you and I, I sent, we, we did a video. I used to always video stuff and I sent it to our friend that, that was with publishing with Sony. And uh, he wrote, he, it was funny because he's, you know, he's kind of, he's seen it all been there and the Japanese um, gentleman. And uh, as soon as I sent that video, next day he messaged me, he's like, I want to see her. <laughs> so I was like, that's oh, pretty oh, yeah. 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 And he's the one who booked me into the, the, the Finland Finnish camp. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, so we're still working together. We're, we're still working together. Yeah, he's a yeah. good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. But yeah, that was, he that was, is. Was, no, was, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and he's also the guitar player from the legendary band. I, I actually didn't know about it like until like a year later or something. Oh, I didn't know that either. I didn't know he was a musician. That's funny. Yeah, he was. He was. He actually was. Like. I probably have seen his video when I was in like high school or something. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, they all, then they get, they want a day job and they want to stay in music. So that's a good place. Yeah, publishing. And mm-hmm. it's interesting too, because, you know, a lot of people, um, they see the pop artists and that kind of thing, but they don't realize like really, I mean, as a working person, as a making a living, like the money is really is in the songwriting and the publishing end of it, um, you know, from a long term standpoint, as at least we call it mailbox money. <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe you don't want to go on the road when you're 60 or 70 and that that publishing yeah. is gonna <laughs> is gonna really save you yeah. um so and as you as an artist what's been going on uh, happening with that are you still writing as an artist and putting your own name out there right so i took a little break when i started writing for like k-pop and j-pop it kind of got a little bit difficult to switch between two different mentalities yeah so yeah and I plus you're little- super busy too right yeah, yeah, I was busy too. So I took a little break and then I felt like like last year, no, 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 no 2000, like somehow 2020 is gone in my brain. I guess <laughs> I know, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we'll just erase that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 2019. So I, I felt like, okay, now I get to afford some time for myself. So I restarted writing and released a song last year and then actually there are a couple more coming from a korean label okay my own stuff yeah and that's cool and you've actually and you've really started doing you you mentioned before we started that you're starting to work a lot more with korean labels and korean um the korean market just seems like it's just booming for music yeah yeah it is and and also like they've been looking into the international market for over a decade or even longer hmm. so like finally yeah and you're and it's great for you because, you could, because yeah 
it's great for timing for you too, because obviously you sing well, very well in English. And that's maybe that, is that challenging for them to find artists there that they can work with that, that can do that, that can do both? Oh, you mean like for Korea? I mean, yeah. like, no, it's actually, they can find anybody over there. And like Korean language education is next level. Oh, okay, okay. That's good, <laughs> I, I, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, next level. So I, I've met like also like artists. They can sing like so much better than I really gotta say. K-pop singers tend to sing a little bit better than J-pop bands. Oh. I don't know where it's coming from, but no offense. I I think J-pop is getting better, and also like we have different promotional right. scheme. Yeah. So yeah, so a lot of Japanese boy bands, they also like act more and also they're in like like musicals and stuff, mm. commercial. When K-pop bands are, they act too, but they're more focused on the music side. So that, oh, okay. that's a difference. Yeah. But a lot of the members, some like a lot of the bands, they have like a couple of members that speak English fluently, like like blackpink if you look at blackpink they mm. i think most of them speak english very well so much yeah. better than and i you do also, i mean you also have japanese that come over from the states right that go over there directly to, to try to become j-pop stars the people that grew up speaking english yeah. and japanese even as maybe as a second language <laughs> so it's you know mm -hmm. yeah and i know we, we i ran into those folks too i lived in in uh, japan um, the language mm -hmm. in Japan, it's interesting. Like people kind of, they kind of think, you know, like in Tokyo, there's a lot of people that do speak English or do speak some English. When you get outside of Tokyo and some of the smaller towns and stuff, it, it gets more challenging <laughs> for, for as a Western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, yeah, Japan's fun. I mean, I, you know, we, uh, one of the things that we used to do a lot of was there's so many clubs in Tokyo or around Japan where you can play singer songwriter stuff. There's a lot of that available yeah. norm normally. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you've always enjoyed doing, playing the clubs? Yes, I, I enjoyed like, playing the clubs in Japan. But um, yeah, with COVID, it's, now it's a little bit more difficult yeah, to do that. So I started doing like online streaming live from my own studio here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's become, fun. I'm sorry, that's become, yeah, it seems like everybody's doing that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you enjoy do you enjoy doing the live streaming thing? Is it's kind of a different different world, I guess, but Yeah, it's different. But I also I like live streaming from my house too. Cause I can start late. <laughs> yeah, there you and... go. Do your own, own skin. <laughs> yeah, like I and like sound check it's so much easier since it's my place and I like yeah. me just it's just my finger sound check. Right, yeah, yeah. And can... like, yeah, so yeah, it, it, it's in a way casual and nice, but it doesn't have, for singer songwriter like me, so it kind of substitute playing at the club, but at the same time, it doesn't have the wow moment or like top player doing an amazing song. Like, wow, it doesn't happen at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny, so like, it's funny not getting the feedback right from the audience <laughs> so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, what's, yeah, so, yeah, so <laughs> what's um what's coming yeah, up we'll for go you? Ahead. I, I was just gonna say, what's uh, coming up for you, songwriting wise, project project wise? Like, what's the next couple of things that you're gonna be working on? Um, I have like some releases coming out, so I'll just post it because it's all confidential. So I'll post it on the Instagram and um. A couple of original songs of mine will be released from a Korean label. So I'll, yeah, I'll advertise that on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter. How can that, and actually, I, I should One other song, I, I, I actually, yeah, it's a, one of the songs um, that's coming out. I've actually written it on the freeway in LA. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's a, which is a crazy place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, yeah, I remember I was like dri driving probably on 10, like very straight. And then 
and the GPS starts saying, continue straight. And okay, I felt like, okay, maybe I shouldn't write a song about GPS. And continue straight into what if I go ahead into, and I started singing, driving straight. And yeah, that's how it happened. <laughs> it's funny. Hey, you know what? You never know, right? That's guys talk about like, they'll be, uh, like you said, using, they're sitting, sitting there doing their thing. And all of a sudden this magic thing happens. Sometimes that's the biggest songs, stuff you can't, you can't plan on. Uh, and it's funny because yeah. actually one thing that we I noticed you had posted on your um, your Facebook page is that some of your groups have hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. And I, I yeah, what was yeah, what yeah. was was that was that twice? I'm not sure which one it was. They had 250 million uh, views. Yeah, it is, it is twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's, twice. Maybe like TXT song. Yeah, take TXT song probably have like 100 million views too. I think. Yeah, I uh, it was crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's awesome though. I mean that that's the, and the, the, what's cool about that is that stuff makes its way around the world. It's not just in Asia; it's it's everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's awesome. And, and so, how can people find you on, online? I know you have Facebook and and Instagram and all that stuff. What's the easiest way for them to to um, check out what you're doing? For English speakers, in Instagram. I mostly Instagram on in English. Twitter mostly in Japanese. Japanese because uh, I don't know why but uh, maybe like Twitter yeah like somehow like Twitter is in Japanese so I guess like Instagram is the easiest place to okay, follow so me. I started it's... Clubhouse but I don't know how to use it so. yeah I know yeah I started TikTok too and like that's like <laughs> you should actually probably do TikTok because that's all I think a lot of fans are there but um so and on, yeah, on Instagram is it, is, it my, my my U, is it just Mayu Akisaka or how do they what's yeah the Mayu Akisaka but there are two Mayu Akisaka but the one with like Barbie doll anime looking, I don't even have my photo over there, but the yeah, the anime looking Mayu Akisaka, that's me. Okay, cool. Yeah, it has, yeah, it has an anime face of me. Okay, yeah, and I'll, I'll put that information uh, actually on the end of this video and on the podcast. We'll we'll put all your links and and all that stuff. So cool. thank you so much for joining us. I you have so much like so much we could talk about and, and maybe we'll do another one down the road when you have your own when your, when your own release comes out yeah yeah i'd love to because i'm a huge fan of your songwriting even just just your stuff that we used to play um those songs are they're timeless and they're they're i think that they will really work in any language because the melody's great and you're you're also a great singer which i which i yeah. uh, i'm a fan <laughs> Thank you. And also, like, you introduced me to, like, sending my video to the, the Sony staff. It, it's the start of everything. So I'm very grateful. Wow, that's awesome. And, I, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, if we help each other in this world, life's a little bit easier. <laughs> so yeah, that's, an awesome, okay. that's an awesome thing. And, and also, uh, mm -hmm. also good people, too, which is great. Our, our, okay. our band guys that we've played with um, in Japan and when we did Southwest, South by, by West, South by Southwest, those guys are great, too. Great players, nice guys. Um, please tell them I say hello from Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will definitely will. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. And I and thank people, you so much. you're very welcome. And we will put um, all your information on the podcast mm -hmm. link and on here with so how people can find you. And there, um, I know you you talk to fans and stuff, so they're welcome to to message you and and that kind of thing. It's maybe cool. songwriting, to make songwriting questions too. That could be fun. Yeah, sure. Like whatever, whatever you want to ask or say. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mayu. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Talk soon. Yes.